Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I got a request actually from one of my friends, uh, Meeks. You have been granted your wish. I did one on derma rollers, yay. Um, so I wanted to do something on derma rolling and to be clear, I am not an esthetician, I'm not a dermatologist. If you are wanting to try this and you have access to either an esthetician or a dermatologist, then I would suggest going that route first, at least for the first few times, just to kind of get an idea of what the do's and don'ts are, um, professional opinions based on your personal skin type and your um, desires, meaning whether or not the things that you want are actually achievable through using derma rolling. So derma rolling has has gained in popularity, everyone's using it, and everyone's using the kind of over-the-counter derma rollers. Lots of people are getting them from Amazon. I personally cannot speak to the efficacy of Amazon purchases. I will tell you the one that I bought was from Amazon. Um, that being said, obviously, if you get a tool from your dermatologist or from your esthetician, if they give you hints and helpful tips on how to purchase or how to look for something, please trust their opinion more than you trust mine. I'm just telling you what works for me, and what I've researched. That is your disclaimer. You can't take everything that I say as gospel. You have to do your own research. First thing that you want to think about is size when it comes to derma roller. You can get as low as 0.2 millimeters and you can go as high as 2.5 millimeters. So somewhere in there, that is what you're going to be looking at, how big you want to go. Now for delicate skin around the face, you should only go to as high as 0.75 millimeters. For a lot of people who have serious uh, skin issues, you're going to want to go with a 0.5 or a 0.75. If you are just looking to get products to kind of go into your skin a little bit better, you generally have pretty good skin, so you don't have a whole lot of concerns. 0.2 is going to be the most that you're going to need. You don't really need a lot. There's no reason to, you know, attack your skin with great fervor just because it's available for you. So just stick with something that will help all of your products go into your skin a little bit better if you have generally pretty clear skin that doesn't really have a lot of wrinkling. I personally am using a 0.5. As far as the changes that I've seen, I haven't been using it as regularly as I did when I first got it. When I first got it, I saw a lot of changes very quickly and then those changes kind of tapered off. So I don't know if it's just because I got as much of it as I possibly could out of that one size and now I need to jump up a size or if this is just the extent of what the benefits are going to be. Like I said, I haven't done this in a while because like all things, <laughs> I kind of fall off the wagon and I, I get back on the wagon and right now I'm trying to get back on the wagon because I loved the way my skin looked and took product when I was derma rolling so I want to get started again. So if you're wanting to do an area of your body like your thighs, if you have stretch marks or your lower stomach, any place like that or if you're just wanting to break up some pigment on those places then you're going to want to go with a larger needle size and this can be anywhere from one millimeter to 2.5 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and post a link to a blog entry of mine and I'll give you all of the research that I've found, again, you should go to an esthetician or a dermatologist first before doing this and make sure you have the clearance to do it. Um, obviously, I can't give you that. I don't know what your skin type is like. I don't know what your issues are. So you really want to go see a professional before you start doing something like this. That being said, if you are like me and you're just going to take the plunge and suffer the consequences if, you know, it ends up not being good for you, then by all means, look at the blog entry below and kind of determine what your needs are and what size is going to be best for you. I always suggest starting smaller and then working your way up for anything. This is not like a sprint. This is a marathon. So if you think about it like that and you have your expectations kind of manageable, then you'll probably enjoy the process. But if you're looking to get like high impact, I'm going to go for the highest millimeter that I possibly can and I'm going to get all the results, you are inevitably going to be disappointed. So don't do that to yourself. Just assume that you're going to start with the smallest and work your way up and see you know, what your skin can tolerate and assume that you're going to get moderate results over a long period of time. So what 
derma rolling does essentially, and this is like super layman's terms, is create micro injuries on your face or on, on your skin rather, and that triggers a collagen production in your skin. Collagen is what keeps your skin firm, it's what keeps it tight, it's a large portion of what keeps your skin looking clear too. Collagen production is basically, it's what you need for all of your skin woes, well, except acne, and we'll get into that. So acne scarring, any sort of scarring on your face, any sort of pigment issues, uh, fine lines and wrinkles to moderate and mild wrinkles. If you're kind of working with a lot more wrinkles, then this is going to be good for you. It's not gonna do as much for you as maybe doing some laser treatments would. So just a forewarning, if you're working with deeper wrinkles, this is not gonna be a miracle for you. So a lot of people ask about if it's painful. It is not painful, or at least I don't consider it painful. It's mildly irritating. It's not like you're actually stabbing yourself with needles. You're not putting that much pressure into it. That being said, if you have very sensitive skin, you might try this with a very small needle. And I would say if you find that you're getting really irritated more than one time, it's not worth it. Just don't do it. Or, you know, like I said, again, go to your dermatologist, go to your esthetician and say, is this a good thing for me? Is this going to help me or is this gonna hurt me? It's always better to have a professional's opinion than to trust some Yahoo on the internet. When should you use this? If you are using 0.5 to 0.75 on your face, then you should probably only use it two times a month. You wanna give your skin time to heal after you create those micro injuries. And if you're constantly injuring it again, it's never gonna heal. And it's never gonna get that collagen producing effect that you're looking for. Um, if you're doing a smaller size, like a 0.2 or a 0.25, you are not actually going to be able to create those micro injuries. What you're essentially going to do is you're going to push whatever product that you're using deeper into your skin so that has more efficacy so just to let you know those can be done as far as I've researched those can be done every single day but if you're going up sizes like 0 0.5 0 0.75 um, if you're using them on your body and if you're going for the like really big needles you're gonna want to do that once a month because there is absolutely no way that your skin can heal faster than that and you have to give it time to catch up and to actually produce the collagen that you're looking for so with all that said I use my products before I derma roll. I am going to be using this Puraderm face mask that uh, says brightening, moisturizing, vitalizing, and it has collagen and vitamin E in it. I have actually used quite a different uh, amount of these. So Puraderm is pretty popular. If you go to any like Asian beauty stores or Asian supermarkets, you're always gonna see these guys and also like the little uh, pandas and lions and stuff and those are always fun. But uh, I have a nice little selection of these because I have a Korean friend whose mom just constantly pushes these masks off on her like more than she can possibly use. So I always get some masks for myself because she wants them out of her house. And I'm like, okay, I can do that for you if I must. So I'm going to put this on my face and while I do that, I am going to soak my beautiful derma roller in rubbing alcohol. So you wanna make sure that the whole thing is soaked in rubbing alcohol for at least five to 10 minutes. So you use a little dish, gently place it in there, put the rubbing alcohol in, and you can do all of that at the same time. My dogs are going crazy in the other room. All I hear is tap dancing and oh, that's how you know they're having fun. All right, I'll see you guys in 15 minutes. Hello, Clarice. <laughs> okay, so this mask has been sitting on my face for about 15 minutes, but it started kind of falling off, so I decided to stop it. And this sat in rubbing alcohol for approximately eight minutes, and now it's just been drying for the rest of the time. I am ready to get started. I'm just gonna take this off. Woo. You can see that I still have a lot of the mask juice on my face. So one thing to note before we get started is that I'm not gonna be going over any active skin breaks or any active acne, pimples, anything like that. The reason you don't wanna go over those areas is because you don't wanna risk spreading bacteria from one place to another and then creating more issues. So just make sure you avoid those spots. As you can see, my forehead is clear. Around this area is clear. This is actually just a post-acne breakout situation. You can see that I have a good amount amount of uh, hormonal acne right now. So I'm just waiting for that to clear up. But this right here and all of this is just post acne uh, redness. So I'm good to go there. Still kind of tacky and my hands are clean. So I'm gonna start with my forehead. I start from the center and go out and then I go down a little bit 
and down. And then I'll do that two more times. So I think you can do one place up to like 10 times, but I just don't see the point. And then I'm gonna do the other side. Okay, now I'm going to go vertically the same way. And now I'm going to go on the diagonal. And I only do this once each way. Lots of people say you shouldn't go on the eyes, but lots of people also say that you can go on the eyes. I will usually just do right here, like any areas of uh, hyperpigmentation for me, just right around the eyes, and then just a little bit right here. And then on areas where I have a little bit of a scar, I'll do that just a little bit extra. So again, that is just a scar. So I can go over almost my entire cheeks on both sides. I'm gonna avoid this and this right here. Okay, so chin is gonna be a little bit tricky, but I can go all right here. I just have to avoid these spots. And you can also do the lips. I usually save that for last, so I'm gonna go over my nose real quick and then I'll do lips last. Lips are last. I go vertically, horizontally, diagonally, diagonally. And that's it. So from here, the next thing that you can do, well obviously, besides spraying it down with some more alcohol and letting it dry, you can also do um, LED red lights and that will help boost your collagen production too. So if you do this in tandem with LED red light therapy, it's going to be aces. If you just do it on your own, then just make sure that you put a little bit extra moisturizer on and you don't stay red for very long if you do it properly. It's not painful. It's a really easy thing to add to your um, every month routine, every two weeks routine. And I find that if you go into it with realistic expectations, you actually will see results. Obviously, like I said, it's not a laser. It's not going to um, be on par with a surgical treatment, but it definitely helps. It helps your skin to really absorb whatever treatment it's receiving. It helps to produce collagen to help break down those imperfections. It's aces. What else? Yeah, just use common sense, guys. You're using a thing with like a lot of needles on it, so don't go nuts. Don't do something dumb. Use your best judgment. Pay attention to your skin. Pay attention to what your body is telling you. Obviously, if you do it once and your skin like balloons up and you get hives, then that is not the treatment for you and there's no reason to push forward through that pain. So hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think about derma rolling slash microneedling, whatever you want to call it. Let me know if you do it at home or if you really prefer to go to a dermatologist or an esthetician to do it. What do you think about people doing this on their own at home? Do you think it's safe? Do you think it's advisable? Uh, do you do it? Let me know what you think below. And also let me know any other tips and tricks you have with derma rolling that you find are the most beneficial and share them with the class below. As always, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you really liked it, hit the subscribe button. I make new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. So when you hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the little bell next to it. And that will let you know every time I release a new video. You can find me elsewhere at OjoLeeXOX, and that's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. Talk to me. I want more friends. All right, you guys. See you next time. Mwah. And don't forget, in the description box below, there will be a link to the blog entry that will have a lot more information about needle sizes, about how often to do it, what kind of skin conditions can be treated with derma rolling, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Best products, best practices, all that business.